In today's video, we'll check out the Crow Vision by Elecro. The Crow Vision is an 11.6 inch IPS 5 point capacitive touchscreen panel. I would like to thank Elecro for sending this unit over for us to check it out. A few things that set the Crow Vision apart from other panels is the larger display and a unique mounting system that allows you to easily attach most any single board computer to the back. How did they pull it off? Well, let's find out. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Kind folks over at Elecro sent over their most recent kit, the Crow Vision. We've covered a number of Elecro products in the past, all of which have been very useful. This one is no different, but it is geared more for those who like to mod, tinker, or create their own custom projects. The Crow Vision is available now on the Elecro website, and I'll place a link down in the description below if you want to check it out. It currently is selling for $120 US dollars. The display panel itself operates at a resolution of 1366 by 768 and is a 5-point capacitive touch panel. What separates this from other panels is that you get a larger 11.6 inch display at 1366 by 768 resolution where similar products are between 7 and 10.1 inches and designed to work with very specific single board computers. The Crow Vision is different in that it supports several Raspberry Pi variants, Banana Pi, BeagleBone, Latte Panda, Rock Pi, and the NVIDIA Jetson Nano. The kit comes with several accessories and includes the cables and adapters that you're going to need to connect to most any single board computer. The included user's manual is decent and provides some of the basic setup scenarios there are a number of accessories, and I'll get them out of the box so you can see what's included. First off, we have a micro HDMI to mini HDMI cable, a mini HDMI to a standard HDMI, a micro USB to USB type A for the touchscreen functionality and no drivers are needed, a USB C to USB type A adapter, a barrel power adapter which supplies 12 volts at 24 watts, while the official Pi power adapter outputs 27 watts, the Crow Vision will work with the Pi 5 with a few caveats that we'll discuss in a few moments. There is also an OSD control board which will allow you to add it to your project to fine tune the display settings and power on and off the display in SBC. Last but not least is a small Velcro strip to keep the cables tidy. Of course, the star of the show is the display panel itself. You'll see at the back is the touchscreen mainboard. Along the outer edges is some 3M adhesive strips that you can use to attach to a project that has a bezel. At the top of the board is the micro USB touch port, the mini HDMI input, and the power output. Now let's flip it up so it's easier to see. Here's where you'll plug in the power adapter. This is the power button to the display in the single board computer, the menu button, up and down navigation buttons, and the inner button. The Crow Vision does not have a built-in speaker, but this is where you can plug in an external 3.5 millimeter speaker, or you can use a Bluetooth speaker connected to the single board computer. This is the speaker interface port, the keypad interface if you'll be using the external keypad. Keep in mind all the same functions are available as buttons on the back of the main board. At the top is the micro USB touch interface and the mini HDMI interface and power output. The Crow Vision has a cool method of mounting the single board computer using this rail system. Basically, you can position each standoff horizontally or vertically to fit most SBCs. While technically the Crow Vision doesn't officially support the new Raspberry Pi 5, eh, we're going to try it anyway. Do keep in mind the power coming from the Crow Vision doesn't support the proper amperage. For that, you may want to directly connect the official Raspberry Pi 5 power supply to the Pi 5. However, in this example, I'll go ahead and use the power from the Crow Vision. For setup information on the Pi 5, please see the video linked above. With the computer now connected, we'll just take the micro HDMI end and plug it into the port nearest the power on the Pi 5 
the mini HDMI into the Crow Vision board. Next, the USB type A end into the USB board on the Crow Vision, and the USB C end into the power of the Pi 5. Again, you may want to instead use the official Pi 5 power adapter as we discussed earlier. Lastly, the micro USB to the Crow Vision board, and the USB type A end to any USB port on the SBC. I'll then use the Velcro strip to secure the wires. From what I understand from the Crow Vision website, your Crow Vision should ship with a mounting stand. This early version did not, so I used one of these Amazon Basic stands and it worked out very well. Then I just plugged in the power, and in the next segment we'll discuss the software side of things. Next, we'll discuss the software and operating systems. In this example, I'm on the Pi 5 running Ubuntu Desktop. I'll place a link up above for a full guide that will demonstrate how to set it up on the Pi 5. Anyways, to fully utilize the touchscreen on the Crow Vision, you'll want to enable the on-screen keyboard. That is, when you select a text field, such as the address bar of a browser, you can use the on-screen keyboard to enter text into the field. Here's how to set it up. Click the Show Apps icon, locate Settings, scroll down until you see Accessibility, select Typing, and check the option Screen Keyboard. Now when you close out of Settings, the on-screen virtual keyboard will become active. In this example, I'll load up LibreOffice Calc. Pinch to zoom in, then type in a series of numbers, then type in a formula to sum those numbers, select the range, and all the numbers have been summed up. We can also add a little formatting to make it easier to read. And there we go. This is just one way you can make good use of the Crow Vision touchscreen. And keep in mind there was no driver installation required. I did try a few virtual keyboard options for Pi Desktop, including Onboard, which is one that I've used in the past, but none that I tried worked all that well on the Pi 5. I think it's a software-related issue, as the touchscreen worked perfectly fine in Ubuntu. If I find a solution for Pi Desktop after this video, I'll add it to the written Pi 5 guide, but something I wanted to make you aware of. You can connect the mini HDMI to HDMI cable directly to a PC, laptop, Mac, if you want to add a second display. But SBCs are likely to be its most common use, so let's continue. As the Pi 4 is officially supported for use with the Crow Vision, it is only fitting that I swap over to that model. The swap is easy and goes quickly. Just remove the attached cables and unscrew each standoff, and then reinstall the Pi 4 and attach all the cables. At this point, I've installed a fresh copy of Botticera to this micro SD card to try it out. If you're not already familiar with Botticera, it's a Linux operating system which is designed for playing retro games. When Botticera first starts, the display will look odd. This is because the resolution isn't set correctly, but we'll take care of that in a moment. But first, if we're going to play retro games, well, we're going to need audio. So I'll just attach this cheap external speaker, which is powered by the Pi's USB port, and plug it directly into the 3.5mm audio jack on the Pi 4. I'll also plug in a clone Xbox 360 controller. Alright, we're pretty much all set. Let's take a look at fixing the display. Just press Start on the controller, move down to System Settings, and then all the way down to the bottom until you see front-end developer options. For the video mode, set it to 1280 by 720 at 60 Hz, then reboot for the changes to take effect. Once set, the display will look much better. You'll also be able to navigate the UI using the touchscreen. With the OSD control board added, or using the buttons at the back, you can make a number of adjustments to the display itself, such as adjusting the brightness, or changing the aspect ratio from widescreen to 4x3, or back to widescreen. And of course, there's many more options. While we have Botticera installed, let's briefly check out Classic Kong.
At this point, I could add the Crow Vision into a custom arcade cabinet or any number of projects that may benefit from a larger touchscreen display. A few examples that come to mind would be to use it with Octoprint for controlling and monitoring a 3D printer or as a home assistant panel. But that brings us to the end of another video. One additional point I'd like to make before we wrap this up is that Elecro does have a 3D printable back shell if you'll be needing it for your project. Although I personally would like to see an option to have an injection molded back panel as part of the kit. 3D printing one would take a while as the model is fairly large. All in all, the Crow Vision is an impressive solution if you're wanting to bring your own project idea to life. The display looks nice and the ability to use most any single board computer with it is a great feature. What do you think of the Crow Vision? Comment below and share your thoughts. If you found this video informative, please click the like button. And if you haven't already subscribed, I hope you'll consider doing so. And with that, I look forward to talking with you again very soon.